and I'd like to call this meeting to order. Good evening, everybody. This is my second attempt at uh, logging into a Toastmasters meeting. I had a good time last week, and um, <clears throat> I'm hoping a few, I see Ron Slaybaugh has joined from our club. I'm hoping there's a few more that I haven't seen pop up yet. But tonight's theme is learning and growing with Toastmasters. And I know that I've done a fair amount of learning and a little bit of growing in Toastmasters myself. When I joined Toastmasters a few years ago, it's been long enough now that I've lost track of how long ago that was. I was petrified of standing up in front of anybody to talk about anything. And this year I was able to get to the point that I was able to challenge myself to enter a speech contest, which I did. I'll definitely do it again. It was a fun experience. And that's something that I definitely learned about myself is that I like the challenge that Toastmasters offers me. And I've grown in Toastmasters to the point that I've gotten to the point that I've never thought I would have gotten to, which was seeking out opportunities to speak in front of folks. With that said, we does, did anybody pull up a flag picture? Rob's got one. Rob's got one? I guess I should, have, yep. I should have addressed this before I even got talking, but uh, <laughs> Rob, if you would uh, actually, with if all of the rest of us would mute our phones or computers, whatnot, and Rob can say the Pledge of Allegiance, we'll be able to see him talking. So Rob, go ahead and take it away. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Rob. Greatly appreciated. This morning, our Toastmaster, or this evening, excuse me, I've reverted back to our morning meetings. This evening, our Toastmaster is Luke Evans. Luke, would you take things away? Good, Good evening, everyone. Wonderful April, spring, day we had and a beautiful evening. Happy to be here. A great theme that Lloyd picked for us, learning and growing. I've this past week been learning a lot about emotions, social emotional learning and other things like that. I, I um, joined a, a, a group that's called the Mankind Project and they're focused on training men to understand their emotions better and be able to express them better. It's, it's very cool, it's very interesting. And I listened to, I had homework, and this is something I wanna share with everybody because it was fascinating. Uh, the homework was to listen to this Brene Brown podcast uh, called Unlocking Us. And she was interviewing Dr. Mark Brackett, who's a department head at Yale studying emotion. And he had just written a book, Permission to Feel. They, they talked a lot about this book on the podcast. And there were some really interesting things that were brought up. One idea that was, or one study that I thought was fascinating, I'm gonna share briefly. Mark Brackett was talking about how teachers are unaware, and we all are, this is not just teachers, this is all of us, we're unaware of how our emotions affect us. We think we're being very objective. And there was a study that he cited about how uh, teachers were asked to write five minutes or recall uh, a positive experience in their life that made them feel happy. Think about it for five minutes. Another group of teachers, same thing except for a negative experience. And then they were asked to grade some essays. This was a large enough pool to have it be statistically relevant. And there was a full grade point difference higher for the ones that thought of a positive experience, lower for the ones that were thought of negative memory. Even more interesting is that when asked afterwards, do you think that your emotions had an impact on your grading? Something like 85 plus percent said no. So quite a, a blind spot there that, again, we all have, this isn't just teachers. Fascinating stuff. So that's what I'm learning about. And another interesting quote that came up that's relevant to Toastmasters that Mark Brackett said in this podcast, which grabbed me, is that most kids do not fail to reach their potential because of lack of creativity or lack of certain capacities. It's 
it's mostly that they do not have the bandwidth or the understanding of regulating emotions and taking negative feedback and not taking it personally, being able to you know, adapt, incorporate, and move forward with some slight modifications to their behavior. I thought that was pretty interesting and relevant to us because this is what we do. We come out here, like Ian said, take risks and to grow, get feedback, hopefully learn to incorporate that feedback. We're gonna hear a speech from Rob tonight, his second speech, and uh, on the same, second time on the same speech. So we're gonna get to hear him probably uh, do that, basically incorporate some of the feedback we've given him in the past. So I'm gonna pass it off to our general eva evaluator, Christina, at this point. Thank you, Luke. Good evening, everyone. It's so nice to see faces, even though we're not in the same room. It just helps to be able to see everybody's smiling face. I appreciate all of you. Tonight, as general evaluator, I'll be overseeing the details of the meeting. To accomplish that, I will call upon a team of very capable assistance. First is tonight's speech evaluator, Ian Adams. Ian, would you explain your role tonight? Yes, thank you. I'll be evaluating Rob's speech tonight. And this is Rob's second attempt at this speech. He's going to be taking feedback that he received from the first attempt and applying it to this speech trying to make improvements as indicated by his fellow Toastmaster peers that he needed. Rob's speech, I didn't catch the length of it, is I believe it's probably a five to seven minute speech. That's all I have on that. At this point, I'll turn it back over to you, General Evaluator. Thank you, Ian. The next member of our team tonight is our timer. Joyce, would you explain your role, please? Absolutely. I make sure that we don't go over until the next Monday is what I'm here for. <laughs> magic toilet paper will be willing to able to make sure that by the time you hit this, it's time to go. Not literally, you can say you just <laughs> stop talking. As for the amount of time the table topics at one, we will be seeing green. At a minute and a half, the yellow. And um, this um, message does not relate to anyone. We really do give a crap. And after you have talked for two minutes, you will get red. Not literally. As for most uh, speeches, unless I hear anything different, at five minutes for a speech, we'll get green. And then at six, yellow. And at seven, red. Now for the evaluation, two minutes, green. Two and a half, yellow. And three, red. So I am willing and happy to listen to everyone in time. Back to you. Thank you. Very entertaining presentation of the colors. The next member of our team is our grammarian tonight. That's Brandy. Brandy, would you explain your role? Thank you. Uh, Christina, tonight I will be the grammarian for the first time, which I enjoy because I appreciate colorful uses of the English language. So I'll be tracking not only who uses it, but how many times you use the word of the day, which I'll be introducing now. The word of the day is, can you see it on my green screen? Tandem. And I have the meaning pulled up here. Tandem is an adverb, and it means with two or more horses harnessed one behind another, or 
an adjective tandem, such as having two things arranged one in front of another. So alongside each other or together would be a phrase. And I will also be using, looking for incorrect uses of the English language, such as I ain't got no pencils. So at this point, back to you, Christina. Nice job explaining your role too. I did have it pulled up and then something happened. So sorry about that. The next member of our team tonight is our awe counter, Ron. Ron, would you explain what you'll be doing? Christina, certainly I will. I will be keeping track of the filler words that make their way into our speeches, such as and, well, but, so, you know, ah, uh, um, er. I'll also do my best to track repetitions and I will report back at the end. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, everyone on the team, for showing up tonight and being ready to conduct business remotely. At this point, I will turn the meeting back to our Toastmaster, Luke Evans. Thank you, Christina. All right, it's time for our speaker <laughs> of the evening, Rob Tidd. Our world and our lives are sometimes filled with mysteries that cannot be solved or explained. Rob's speech today addresses an event that happened in his life. This is the second time Rob's told this story. Rob Tidd and his mysterious experience. Have you ever had an experience in your life that you couldn't explain or rationalize? I have. As a young boy, I grew up on Indian reservations, the last one being an Apache Indian reservation in Arizona. Most of the kids in my fifth grade class were from the Apache tribe, but there were a few kids that were from other tribes as well, Navajo and Hopi that I knew for certain. There were just four of us in my class who were not Native American Indian, Julie, Dougie, Bobby, and me. We didn't know Julie very well, she called us dirty little boys and told us to keep our distance. Well, she was right. When you live in the desert and you spend most of your time outdoors, you're pretty much dirty all the time. The Indian kids, they treated us as outsiders. They normally did not include us in any outdoor activities unless you considered the occasional rock fight at recess. We usually lost those competitions because we had fewer members on our team. Bobby, Dougie, and I, we did everything together. We watched each other's back at school. On weekends and after school, you could usually find us down at the river, swimming, catching fish with our bare hands, or exploring the nearby hills and mesas. Before I would go out and play with my friends, my mother would always give me my standing marching orders. I'm sure as kids, Growing up, you probably got similar orders from your parents as well. My mother would say to me, watch out for rattlesnakes and tarantulas, and if you take your shoes off, be sure and shake them out before you put them back on in case a scorpion has crawled back inside. It was a Saturday. Bobby, Dougie, and I decided that we were gonna cross the river and go explore the nearby hills and mountains. We had done that many times before, but the idea was we were gonna go a little bit further than we'd ever gone before. Off we went. We hadn't gone very far when, I came, when we came to a box canyon. A box canyon is shaped like a horseshoe. There's one way in and the one same way out. It was smaller than a normal box canyon. The side walls, were about 30 yards apart. The floor angled downward and ended at a rock wall about 30 yards down. And that rock wall had to be at least 15 feet high. About seven feet from the floor was a cave. Time to explore. Off we went. We ran down to the bottom of that canyon and in tandem, 
we started up the rock wall. Being mindful, of course, of rattlesnakes, scorpions, and tarantulas. And as our heads crested the floor of that cave, we peered inside. It took several seconds for our eyes to adjust to the darkness. And then shapes started to appear. There was Indian pottery, pots and bowls. There was an Indian headdress made of feathers. There were Indian drums and other items that were used in the local dances, which we were privileged to attend because we lived on the reservation. Then something happened. Even though it was midday and 95 degrees outside, a coldness enveloped my entire body. It was as if I had stepped into a walk-in freezer. It frightened me. I felt as if something or someone was watching me and the hair on my arms and the hair on the back of my neck stood on end. I looked over to Dougie and Bobby and I could see the same fear in their eyes that I was experiencing at that moment. We quickly scrambled down that rock wall and out of the canyon and back to the river. We didn't even bother to take our shoes off. We swam across the river and headed home. We didn't talk about this for two weeks. We didn't tell anyone, not even our parents. And then the team got its mojo back. We were gonna go back to that box canyon. We were gonna climb up that wall into that cave and see what treasures it's hel it, it held inside. We knew we were gonna be dirty little boys when we did this. We were okay with that. We knew who we were. Julie told us often. I promised to bring a flashlight. Dougie agreed to bring a long pole with a hook on the end. And Bobby, well, Bobby agreed to be right behind Dougie and I when we crawled into that cave first. Thanks a lot, Bobby. It was another Saturday. I had my flashlight. I got my marching orders from my mom and off I went. I met Dougie and Bobby at the river. We crossed the river at the same place we had the week before and headed out into the desert. We knew where that box canyon was. We'd all been there. It was just a week ago. We searched for a couple of hours. We retraced our steps. We went back to the river and went towards the location of that box canyon. We went back the next day and did the very same thing over again. That box canyon wasn't where we left it. It no longer existed. Have you ever experienced something in your life that you couldn't explain or rationalize? I have. It was as if something made sure that we did not find that box canyon again with its cave and treasures that we were not meant to see. My experience happened 50 years ago. It's an experience that I will never forget. It's as clear in my mind's eye as if it happened yesterday. An experience that I will never forget and will continue to ponder for the rest of my life. Mr. Toastmaster. Rob, for that very good speech. Timer, can you please get, put one minute on the clock for us to give some feedback to Rob? Please send your comments to Rob by way of the chat screen and make sure to select Rob's name so that it goes just to him in the pull down menu.
One minute. Thank you. Joyce, please wrap up your comments for Rob. This would be a, a good table topics for people to describe those type of events in their life. We are moving on to Table Topics next, next, and Pat Whitfield is our Table Topics master this evening. Pat. It should not surprise anyone that someone who's been an educator for more than 50 years would be entranced by the tandem topics of learning and growing. And that's what I've done. I have my own thoughts on the subject, but I thought to prepare for this, I might consult others who had impressions and ideas about learning and growing. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to share with each one of you for table topics, a statement that's been made about teaching and learning in some cases by a famous person. And I'd love to know what your reaction to it is, whether at the personal level or how it applies to Toastmasters and what you have learned and how you've grown. So the first person that I'd like to address is Ian because he was so clear about sharing how much he had grown through Toastmasters. So Ian, are you there? I am here. Okay, here's a statement for you and let me know what your reaction is. Teachers open the door, but you must enter by yourself. What do you think about that? Great statement. I have two young kids. I have a 10 year old and a seven year old that I'm homeschooling along with my wife right now due to Corona virus concerns. One of the things that I have to stress upon both my kids on a nearly daily basis is that they have to be willing to accept the fact that they are learning a new concept and that it's gonna be difficult sometimes. I'm struggling with my daughter on learning math right now, not math, but specifically decimals and fractions. She's a fourth grader. We just graduated the fraction unit and we've moved into the decimal unit, both of which are very similar in how, how, the, how the math works, essentially. She hates math. She can't stand it. She'd rather go pick up dog poop, I think, than do math. And I have to talk to her every day about how if she just lets her mind accept that this is an opportunity to learn something new and not focus so much on being closed-minded, viewing this as a formidable door that she has to walk through and push to open, the, the math will come much easier to her. My son, similarly, he's got the same sort of issues with reading. And I talked to him about how all he has to do is open the book and much like opening a door, there's a whole new world inside those books. Just like every door you open, there's a whole new scene. There's a whole new world things that are taking place happening inside whatever room it is, whatever door you're entering through. He loves, he's very imaginative. And once he gets into reading a book, he gets super excited about it, but he's so timid about opening the door and walking through it. It's a daily struggle. I suppose, I suspect it's probably a daily struggle for most of us on some minute basis. I just stress upon all of you, and I have to remind myself about this, that there's always something new and exciting behind every door you're going to walk through. Thank you. Thank you very much. This next one is for Rob. 
and it's a statement made by Harry Truman. Remember good old Harry Truman, President of the United States from the heartland. And what he said, it's what you learn after you know it all is what counts. What you learn after you know it all is what counts. What do you think about that? Well, if you're like me, when I was a teenager, I thought I knew it all. And actually, I knew very little to none. Fortunately, I had parents that were able to help me understand that I didn't know it all and I had a lot to learn. And it's changing my perspective on that is something that I have done my entire life since, since I've grown up. I enjoy learning new things because I know I don't know everything. It's the reason I went to college. It's the reason I went to graduate school. It's the reason that I continue to learn in my job because if I don't, then I know that I'm not gonna be as sharp in my older age and I'm not gonna know as much as I should know. So I continue each and every day to try and learn new things. And I think I've mentioned this before, not only is it fun to learn new things, but it makes you that much more valuable in your job. And I have found that doing things and knowing things that people either cannot do or, not, or are not willing to do is great for job security. And I will continue to do that for the rest of my life. Madam Table Topics Master. Thank you very much, thank you. Christina, here's one for you. Never mistake knowledge for wisdom. One helps you make a living, the other helps you make a life. Never mistake knowledge for wisdom. One helps you make a living, the other helps you make a life. What are your thoughts on that? Thank you, Pat. I agree with that. Knowledge is what we get from studying, from books, from a major in college. Wisdom is what we get from interacting with people, learning how to get along with others, practicing Forgiveness, grace, acceptance, stretching our boundaries in terms of our perspective on people who are maybe a little different than we are. Knowledge is certainly important for getting a job in a specific field or for knowing how to navigate the grocery store. But wisdom is far more important on a daily basis. I think of Solomon, the thing that he asked the Lord for was wisdom, not knowledge, not money but wisdom. He was obviously a very wise and gifted leader. The other things that he needed to succeed came as a result of him pursuing wisdom above all else. Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. You're welcome. Let's try this next one for Luke. This is by Robert Heinlein, who is a science fiction writer, and maybe you've read some of his books. And he said, I never learned from a man who agreed with me. I never learned from a man who agreed with me. What do you think? I'm sure I have learned from someone who's agreed with me, but I do, agree with the premise that conflict 
is really helpful. And I often don't, can't say that I welcome, welcome it sometimes. It can hurt a little bit to have an idea and put it out there and find out that it's maybe not as bulletproof as I thought it was or not incontroversial as I thought it was. And to hear maybe someone's opinion about it being, uh, being different. But if I can stop in that moment when I've got that kind of punch to the gut sort of emotional sensation of like, oh, I'm a little embarrassed or I'm a little hurt or I'm a little angry or scared or whatever it is and take a breath and come back with some curiosity and ask a question like, well, tell me more about that. Then it can go to some really interesting places for me. And it has in my life, but it's required, it requires courage for me at least. I don't know how it works for everyone else, but it's hard to do that, especially in front of other people when you're uh, in a group and you say something and you think you're right about it and someone doesn't agree. And maybe you have a leadership role and maybe the person that, that doesn't agree is, is not and you feel a little bit like, well, who are, who are you to be questioning me in my, in my wisdom, in my role, my esteemed titled role here. But when I've seen other people do that, other leaders engage with someone that doesn't have power and doesn't have rank that is challenging them and engage with curiosity and, and kindness, uh, it is inspiring to me. And uh, I can't say that I have much power like that, but that's the type of leader that I would want to be. And I do think that I can learn a lot more from the people that disagree with me. Madam Tabletop Semester. Thank you, thank you. This one is for Lloyd and it's from Alvin Toffler. The illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read or, and write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. Would you like me to repeat that? No, I think I think I've <laughs> I think I've got it. Toffler was an extremely interesting guy. He's one of the people who invented the the uh, not exactly a profession, although he made a lot of money at it. The profession of futurist, and he said things very similar to that a lot. One of his expressions that is stuck in my mind is a restatement of what you just said, Pat, and that is that in the future, capability won't matter as much as copability. In other words, people who can cope with things, can cope with change, can understand that there, there's a constant process of change going on in society are the ones who are going to profit from it. Whereas those who are merely capable, in other words, know how to do things, may not. And he, in one of his books, his most famous book called Future Shock, mm -hmm. he, he expanded on that idea a lot and what he said was that most of what we learn in our lives becomes obsolete before we finish our lives. And if you think about that in your own life, that's certainly true. You've probably learned a lot of things that once were true and important, but aren't so true or important anymore. Um, I'm trying to think of an example right now and I can't, but nonetheless, I think it's self-evident that, that, that we've all done that. So the trick is being able to to jump to new things, to understand uh, change when it occurs, because there are really only two choices. You can either stand in front of the bus complaining about where it's going to go, or you can get on the bus and take it where it's going, or preferably help determine where it's going to go. Madam Table Topics Master. Thank you very much. Thank you. This next one is for Brandy, and it's a quote from Albert Einstein. And he said, it's not that I'm so smart, but I stay with the questions much longer. What do you think about that? I think that's interesting. Thank you very much, Pat. Um, I think creative minds by nature are repeatedly dogged by some questions, whether they fixate on it at the time, maybe they come back to it later, revisit it later. 
maybe they consult other experts and um, there's just uh, can you repeat the question I'm sorry the last part oh sure it's not that I'm so smart but I stay with the questions much longer yes and I think um, when it comes to the Toastmasters um, and myself, I think some of the questions I ask myself um, are personal challenges, like, am I able to public speak? Do I want to be in front of a camera? Maybe I'll call in today, but seeing everybody else show up consistently, even though I'm a stay at home mom and nobody's twisting my arm to be here, um, it really helps me answer those questions for myself, those questions that we all ask ourselves, who are we, why are we here? And every time I leave one of these Toastmasters meetings, I feel very inspired by all of you. Uh, just working in tandem with all of these other creative minds um, helps me solve some of my own day-to-day uh, -day questions. So, Madam Tabletop this Master, thank you. Thank you very much. This next one is for Ron. And the quote is, Develop a passion for learning. If you do, you will never cease to grow. Develop a passion for learning. And if you do, you will never cease to grow. Is Ron out there? Sure. Oh, Remember to are. unmute this. Pat, as you read that, for some reason I found myself reminded of my high school geometry teacher, Mrs. Brandt. I don't remember her first name. She was just Mrs. Brandt to all of us. And her impact on me is how she described to us on a fairly regular basis that she wasn't there to teach us anything uh, she, other than to teach us how to learn. And I enjoy learning. I turned 50 this year, and I'm certainly not a person that knows it all. And sometimes, in fact, shoot, I'll leave in several times a month. I'll joke around with folks that I'm surprised that I'm 50 and uh, I experienced something for the first time in my life, even, even something as simple as just something observing uh, in, in human behavior. I, I like to read a fair amount. Uh, again, just in the, the spirit of learning or observing what other people are doing in the spirit of learning. I joined Toastmasters to some degree for the desire to learn, of course, how to be a better speaker. And it's grown into a bit more than that for me. And I've been doing this for four or five years now, and I, I enjoy it. I enjoy participating, taking on these roles. I enjoy the speech evaluations, even something as simple as these uh, uh, filling the awe counter role. Because I learn things about other people and what their go-to word is, for example, or even watching Rob's speech today. And Rob, I didn't get any fillers for you. I'm going to go ahead and let that cat out of the bag right now. But your your use of pauses, the way that you put your sentences together and, and such is something that I consider myself to be a pretty decent speaker, but you're a really good speaker. And one of the reasons, besides coming to the Cascade speakeasy, uh, speakeasy meetings to see Lloyd, the first time that I went was because I had missed Lloyd and I wanted to catch up with him. But there's some really talented speakers here that we can all certainly learn from. Oh, okay, you've got my attention. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm through. Madam Toastmaster. Thank you so much. Let's see, Eric. Here's something from John Dewey, as you know, is a famous educator and thinker about learning. Anyone who has begun to think places some portion of in jeopardy. Anyone who has begun to think places some portion of the world in jeopardy. What do you think about that? <laughs> I think we're absolutely in more jeopardy if we don't think. I, that, uh, that quote's got me a little, little twisted up. I think that uh, I agree with some people that think 
better along the lines that I think they should be thinking. <laughs> <laughs> so I probably would have a tendency to debunk those other kinds of cats, but I, I enjoy a lot of viewpoints and I think I can say that I am pretty objective. I like to hear a lot of different ways that people look at problems. I want to learn because I have a limited viewpoint. One thing that I read about the social media stuff is that like on Amazon, which I find interesting is if I pick a book, then they'll send me more of those books like that. Well, it's the same thing on all of this stuff. If you look at news articles, you'll get more of those. That what happens? That totally narrows your viewpoint. So I'm constantly tr striving to try and get different viewpoints so that I can have the opportunity to reject them. But I think that uh, my, my stepson, Gabe, has, is, has just really opened up our relationship because he sees me as being objective and we can talk about politics and we can talk about religion and we can have a spirited conversation where we respect each other's view. And as a matter of fact, I have learned some things from him and I consider that very valuable, Madam Table Topics Master. Thank you very much. Joyce, I have a quote for you from a brilliant scholar by the name of Dr. Seuss. And what Dr. Seuss said, the more that you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you'll go. What do you think? Before I start, is someone gonna tie me? Okay, that'd yeah. be great. I'll put my phone down. The more you read, the more you learn. What was the last part, please? The more things, the more that you read, the more things you will know. The more that you learn, the more places you'll go. Dr. Seuss. That is a very good quote. I love Dr. Seuss so much. I would have to say the more you read, the more you know is a little in tandem with the places you will go. Because if you do not know how to act in a different place, let's just say, for instance, I want to go to China. Am I just going to buy the plane ticket and go to China? No. We don't need another American trying to go someplace where they don't know the customs, they don't know the language. There's a lot of homework that goes into world travel, and not many people know that. They don't show that on the Travel Channel. They should. <laughs> there would be a lot less incidents and a lot of us not locked up abroad. But then again, where's the television value in that? Huh? I would have to say the more that you know from reading, the more that you can ask around and talk to people with viewpoints different than your own and you can grow that way. Thank you. I think that we have reached virtually the end of the time allotted and it should not be surprising that someone who's been a college professor would like to close with this quote from Mark Twain. Never let formal education get in the way of your learning. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. All right, it's time to move into the evaluation portion of the evening. I'm gonna pass this over to our general evaluator, Christina Stepper. Thank you. As I said at the beginning, it's always such a joy to be able to see everyone's faces on Monday evenings. I look forward to this a lot. I'm sorry for those who were here and didn't get to participate. Next week, we'll get you talking more. Or you could make a speech. How's that for a deal? Mary, next week? Did you catch that, Lloyd? Mary's on for next week. Anybody else? You can raise your hands too. Mm -hmm. All right. Joyce. Joyce, are you going to do a speech next week? I'll do my icebreaker. Yay! I'm going to regret this, but yes, I'm going to. <laughs> you aren't going.
going to regret it. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for stepping up. Thank you, Rob, for finding us a flag. At this point, we get to hear from the members of the evaluation team. The first member of the team who will be presenting tonight is Ian. Ian is going to be sharing his evaluation of Rob's speech. Ian? Thank you. The purpose of your speech tonight, Rob, was to provide a speech, either the same speech that you provided before or another speech, but then incorporate in some of the comments from your first speech that were provided to you. I didn't hear your first speech in this process, so I, I'm not exactly sure the difference between this speech and the last speech, but what I can do is I can provide you with the comments that I have and my thoughts on this speech. The general comments as listed on this form, my general comments, I should say, are great job, number one. You did an excellent job of tying in statements that you had earlier in the speech, like the, the warning that your mom had given you. You reflected back on the warning about the scorpions and the tarantulas, and I, there was something else in there too. I, I didn't catch that one. But what it did was it, it kept the listener engaged, not only in what was happening now, but reflecting back on what you had said previously. And it allowed that story to continue kind of churning along in our minds. You also used a few of the, your friend's names. You referred back to your friend's names a few times. And it really helped us kind of build that storyline in our minds that we could see your friends right there along with you as you marched in tandem up to the top of that ridge line outside of the box canyon. You used the word tandem and you used it seamlessly, which was excellent. It's hard to do that with a brand new word right prior to having to give a speech. So you incorporated that very well. Things that you could work on. I thought it was interesting that Rob's, I'm sorry, Ron's, com Ron's comment, sorry, I'm getting confused between Rob's and Ron here. Rob, Ron's comment about your timing. My one comment that I really thought that you could work on a little bit more was to add a little bit more dramatic pause in there. For instance, there was one spot I wrote down where you talked about off we went and you kind of moved on right after that comment about off we went. If you just gave a little bit more pause at a few of those places, you would allow the, the listener to really kind of start anticipating where it is that you're heading off to. Overall, your speech did a great job. You did a great job and your speech did a great job of allowing the listener to really visualize this journey that you were on, this mysterious experience that you had, we all can feel we could feel that cold air inside that cave. And that, the last thing I want to say was really nice job. This is a really awkward environment to have to give a speech in. I'm experiencing that right now as I'm trying to awkwardly give you some feedback. But when you moved your face right close to the camera and you peered in that cave and your eyes shifted from right to left on my screen, we could tell that you're looking inside this massive chasm of a cave. Great job. Looking forward to hearing future speeches from you. Madam General Evaluator. Thank you, Ian. Now we'll hear from our timer, Joyce. Um, okay, I'm not muted. <laughs> That's the universal question to mute or unmute. Everyone did so wonderful today. I'm proud of all of you. I usually am, me and my toilet paper. I'm going to start with the topic master, or the table topics, I should say. Ian, two minutes, 38 seconds. Rob, one minute, 33 seconds. Christina, one minute, 54 seconds. Luke, two minutes, 17 seconds. Lloyd, one minute, 42 seconds. Brandy, one minute, 25 seconds. Eric, one 
minute 58 seconds and I have no idea what was my time please one minute 15 one fifteen. thank you as for the prepared speech Rob you had seven minutes and five seconds Ian for the evaluation three minutes and 30 seconds okay. thank you Joyce Now we get to hear from our grammarian. Brandy, could you share your report with us, please? Thank you. It was nice to hear everyone's colorful use of the English language. And I think almost everyone used the word tandem. And yeah, Ian actually even threw it in once in the closing, which was nice. So uh, first of all, Rob, you're, you had a lot of plenty of or you have plenty of visuals such as catching the fish with your bare hands again i had also when you peered into the cave because the use of creative body language i feel like goes under some some category um and also when you were talking about your mother giving the standing orders i was already picturing some sort of a front porch lecture before you even mentioned scorpions and the rattlesnakes and again, when you mentioned it a, a second time, you said, my mother gave me my standing orders. And again, sent you on your way outdoors. So that was a great use of that word. Um, I'd never heard that term before. Um, Pat, of course, used the word of the day right out the gate in her first sentence. Um, but I guess that goes with being uh, an educator for 50 plus years, I believe she said. So great job there. And, Ian, you also answered the table topics questions uh, in regards to the door being open and shut in various ways um, with your daughter and then also with your son opening and shutting the books and entering the door of knowledge. Um, and also, let's see, Rob, you always make everything relatable as far as um, giving us an audience, a picture of ourselves, making it relatable. Um, Joyce, uh, I appreciated how you said homework going into traveling. I pictured sitting at a desk and actually having piles of travel books and notes around me. And um, Eric, striving to give people opportunities to uh, voice their different opinions so that you can reject them. I like how you say things like that just quite in step and um, without missing a beat. I, I like that sort of colorful language. And do I keep going or am I supposed to just review Rob? Eric, will you give me a head nod if I'm just, you keep just, going. Okay. Yes, you're fine. All right. Um, Christina, I admire how you don't rush. I struggle with that myself. So um, you also seem to take time to find the appropriate words such as stretching boundaries and those sort of things. You also, Answered the question of knowledge versus wisdom very well, um, especially with the imagery of Solomon and the Lord. Um, people who are familiar with that sort of story, or even if you're not, can can get a quick grasp of what you're what you're saying and how powerful that image could be. Um, Luke, you uh, let's see when you give gave an example of your boss or your leader saying, "Who are you to question my role here?" It really gave a powerful image. Um, not necessarily grammatical, but again, the body language really stuck out to me the most. And Ron, uh, <laughs> when you were referring to back to Rob's speech and you said you let the cat out of the bag early um, by uh, informing us before the time that he didn't use any ahs in his, in his filler words. And Lloyd, I believe you said cope ability, not capability. You did say it twice. I think that that's what you were trying to say. Um, I didn't really understand that. So I'm gonna have to um, pick your brain on that. Send me a, a chat. And then also when you said, when coming to, um, when change occurs, you can either jump in front of the bus or you can be on that bus. So that's again, a powerful image of whether you wanna be on board or not. So again, thank you, uh, Madam, Madam General Evaluator. Very nice job, Brandy. Thank you. Oh, and I can send everybody their use of the tan word tandem. I feel like I've spoke too long, but pretty much everyone used it at least once. <laughs> Thank you. The final member of the team to report this evening is our off counter, Ron. 
I think I enjoy this role almost as much as Ian does. And Joyce, <laughs> it's, it's, it's Ian, not Ian. I think that was you. <clears throat> Ian, you did really well. You had one and, and a repetition. It was me, Ron Ron. Uh, Rob, nothing in your speech, but in your table topics, one and, one well. Luke, I recorded three ands, two so's, three ums, a kind of, and a sort of. Christina, clean, absolutely nothing. Let's see, Joyce, have one um. Randy, I'm gonna skip over you for just a moment. Pat Patricia, we have an and. Lloyd, the uh. I caught with myself an um and a repetition, but I don't remember what the repetition was. Perhaps there were others. Eric, one so and one ah. And Brandy, back to you. You're a pleasure to watch. You clearly enjoy this very, very much. Everybody has their go-to filler. Do you happen to know what your go-to filler is? Is it like? No, I didn't write like down at all. Is it um? It's um. Your go-to oh, filler is um. That's why I'm here, thanks. Yeah, you had nine ands. You like and also. But you had a few more ums than that. I'll get to that in a minute. Nine ands, three so's, six ahs, and sometimes it was tough to tell your ahs and your ums apart. Drum roll, please. Hold on. 28 ums. <laughs> Uh, it's a new high score. And, you, and for a phrase to tie it all together, you had an and um uh. <laughs> I, I like that. I thought that was really good. Is it a triple bonus? It is. You, you're, you're clearly the winner here. No you doubt. You win the toaster. That <laughs> no, was fun. No, overall, great job, everybody. Uh, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, team. I just want to say also, Ron and Ian, it's great to have you being part of this with us. And please encourage other members of Electric Toasters to log in and zoom in, join us next week. At this point, I would like to turn the meeting back over to Ian. Yeah, you're on mute, honey. Thank you. All this, all these new tasks I have to remember. At this point, I'll ask if anybody in the group would like to ask any questions or has any comments. If not, I will ask if there's a, oh, Eric. Actually, Lloyd's got something. Okay, Lloyd? Yeah, two things. Uh, I'm not sure all of you know this, but Saturday, Vicki was elected uh, Program Quality Director for District 9 for next year. It starts June 1. That makes her the number two ranking official in Toastmasters for Eastern Washington, Northern Idaho, and the Northwestern roughly, or Northeastern roughly, one-third of Oregon. So way to go, Vicki. And, and excellent Thank job. You. That's also a big advantage for us in the club to have a, a high <laughs> district official here with us. So this is all in all a good thing. So congratulations, Vicki. The Thank second you. thing is, and this applies to both clubs, uh, the original deadline for dues was the 1st of April, but due to this confusion over the coronavirus, that got extended to the end of April. And that's about 10 days from now. And this is a big, big deal. So. Uh, tomorrow I will be sending out, well, Eric and I'll email back and forth about this. We'll try to figure out who actually has and hasn't paid, but it's a bunch of people here in the speakeasy, 16 people supposedly, although we know some of them are not coming back. So Ron, you and Ian want to get on that too. You got to have minimum of eight members to be a club in good standing. And it's not a happy thing to have the club drop below good standing because it, it takes a little bit of hassle to get back up there, to get to 
get TI to admit that you really exist again. So anyway, we'll take care of that. And then next week, we already have two speech, speeches down. Mary, is your speech a, a uh, extra length one or is it a regular five to seven? Okay, good. So there's room for one more speaker if somebody wants to jump on. So back to you, Ian. Thanks, Lloyd. Are you still in my thunder a little bit? I had Vicky's promotional bio right here and I wanted to also congratulate Vicky on uh, being elected to this new position. And I also wanted to say, Vicki, really nice job on preparing that bio. It, it's, it's, the layout is great. The content is great. In comparison to the other ones I saw, this is, this is a nice job. And I'm looking forward to you being the, uh, the new um, quality director for uh, both of these clubs. Yeah, that, that'll be good. Thank you. All right. With that, I guess we can call this meeting adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Well, one more yep. thing. Yep. Uh, we have we have the voting, Ian, that we have to find out who won. Oh, yes. Oh. Oh. Send it to Pat for best yeah. speaker. It can be anybody that had a speaking role. So send it to Pat. Okay. Now, how, do, how does that process work through Zoom? I, I did send in mine. Do we okay, just wait? So if you go into chat and you specifically pick Patricia, then you can um, type in who you. You can also go to the three little dots on the individual's screen. Oh, thank you. And, and it will go specifically to that person. Right. That might be easier on an iPad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it will be. Yeah, so if you're on an iPad or an iPhone or a tablet, just go to the person's picture and click the three dots. Okay. All right, I have messages from 12 people, so that looks like- That would be. <laughs> that's what we had. And the speaker of the evening is Rob. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Congratulations, Rob. And we will see you all next week. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank, Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.